With this video, we will be doing R. Kelly snitches on Diddy from jail. And if you want to help this channel and the content that we make, and please help support our merchandise, the link is in the description. If you didn't hit the like button, make sure you hit the like button. Try and get the channel to grow. And the only way we're going to do this if you like, share, and comment on the content. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's go. Chi Chi, get the yayo. Get the yayo. I thought that was gonna be my last question, but you did bring up R. Kelly, and I gotta ask this. Uh -huh. Precedence does matter. And when we see, even though that was a different situation, different case, when we see what ultimately happened with him, he's gonna be serving about 30 years in jail. He's in the midst of serving about 30 years in jail. Wow. How much, if at I all, does that play years. a role yeah. in the likelihood of a mountain of, uh, of legal matters just coming down on him like a tsunami in light of what happened with R. Kelly. It plays a big role, I think, in terms of how people are responding, those billionaires, those buddies of his that used to party with him. I think folks are making sure they keep their distance because of what did happen with R. Kelly. You saw Jay-Z. I think she got it. She hit the uh, nail right on the head. I think everyone is keeping their distance. Everyone is uh, staying away from him. everybody. But Stevie J seem like they distance themselves from him. Um, you could completely see that going on right now. Even the other day, we seen LeBron James unfollowed him, and we seen uh, videos with LeBron James been saying, "There's no party mm -hmm. like a P Diddy party." And now you unfollow him. Now you unfollow him. It's yeah. like the Forty Eight Laws of Power. It's law number five. Reputation is yeah. everything. Yeah, facts. So you gotta stay clear. <laughs> facts. And it's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all those records together. They both f***ed Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. The iconic duo Diddy and Jay-Z, who've ruled the hip-hop world for decades, seem to be nice. parting ways. Meanwhile, R. Kelly, embroiled in controversy, is breaking his silence from behind bars. First up, the powerhouses Diddy and Jay-Z. Rumor has it their alliance might be over. The news wow. has hit fans like a ton of bricks. Is it creative clashes? That's crazy. When she said that made me think of uh, 50 Cent. He just posted a picture of uh, Jay-Z not too long ago. and was like, where is Jay-Z? Or, Jay -Z? you yeah, know what I'm saying? I remember seeing that. And that is a question. You remember had the brunches, the billion, the billionaire brunches, lunches, or whatever they called it, brunches. You put a whole um, everything. Yeah, everything. Been, er, er. Because you gotta remember, everybody who was attending, like everybody was circling. Yeah. Because there was a lot of money in those circles. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, just the distance from everything. Yeah. You shut everything down. Facts personal beef or some other drama. On the other side, we've got R. Kelly stirring the pot from his prison cell. The singer, who's been making headlines for all the wrong reasons, is finally speaking up, and boy does he have a lot to say. Locked up and facing serious charges, Kelly is now pointing fingers and making some jaw-dropping claims, and it all leads to Diddy and his tapes. R. Kelly has been convicted of a long list of crimes against black girls, but he somehow thinks that Jay-Z, of all people, once wanted him dead. He is even alleging that Jay-Z had a role in his incarceration. Yeah, you heard that right according to kelly there was some now i think about it they did have the beef and the, on a final tour you remember they went on tour again and oh, they end up mace, and they end up macing them on the stage and all that stuff and it's, 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 the tour ended abruptly so yeah. i forgot all about that but he was saying a lot of stuff during that time now that i think about it she just refreshed my memory about yeah, it but at that time i remember there was beef because it was like he was showing up late and yeah. all types of extra <laughs> how you mace that man on stage yeah. though? <laughs> Why you performing? Yes, come out there, miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Some shady stuff going down during his trial, including juror misconduct. And get this, he claims a documentary that potentially influenced the trial was bankrolled by Jay-Z. Ronnie Bow, R. Kelly's former cellmate, spilled some tea to Hip Hop News Uncensored, claiming Kelly didn't have solid proof, but was convinced that his former collaborator Jay-Z had put a hit out on him. Kelly and Jay-Z teamed up in the early 2000s for two albums, oh, The Best of Both out. Worlds and Unfinished Business, and a co-headlining tour that quickly went south. The drama peaked at Madison Square Garden when Kelly left the stage, claiming men were pointing guns at him. On his way back, he got pepper sprayed by Jay-Z's buddy, Tyler Ty Ty Smith. Yeah. Kelly got booted. That's right what you was talking about. I was like, yo, I gotta see the tape because it's been a minute. But yeah. I was I was like, I remember it being some yeah. drama, but yeah. so they went right into it. Yeah, I think it was only like, I think that was like the first, maybe second show. It was like early in the tour. I remember they didn't do a lot of shows. Nah, it got wrapped up quick. They was like, nah, this ain't gonna work. Yeah, this ain't gonna work at all from the tour and slapped Jay-Z with a $75 million lawsuit for breach of contract, which pretty much ended their shaky relationship. According to Bo, Kelly uh -huh. thought Jay-Z felt- You know what I just thought about? Right. 
That been like twenty years. <laughs> was it? Was it when she said happened? She said two thousand four. Oh yeah, that's crazy. It's been that long. Time yeah, that's flies. why I was like, no wonder I can't remember everything just like that. But it's coming back to me. It's crazy how things like that happen. Yeah. All you need is a little refresher and a visual, and then all of a sudden it start clicking. All right, real quick. Felt secure because Kelly was technically bigger at the time. He mentioned getting death threats before the Madison Square Garden show in 2004 and believed they came from Jay Z. Bo said Kelly felt like Jay Z was trying to have him killed for some reason, no matter how wild it sounded. Fallen R&B star R. Kelly has been slapped with a 30-year prison sentence for exploiting his fame to SA young fans, including barely legal ones. One disturbing piece of the puzzle was his infamous marriage to the late R&B icon Aaliyah. The court delved into how Kelly orchestrated a sham marriage to the then 15-year-old singer in 1994, fearing she was pregnant. Witnesses recounted how they donned matching tracksuits for the ceremony and used a fake ID that claimed Aaliyah was 18 while Kelly was 27. While Jay-Z enjoys life with Beyonce and Blue Ivy, Kelly's legal troubles are wrecking Rest in peace to Leah, but can you imagine where Leah would have been at if she was still alive? Because at the time, she was at the height of her music career, and then she was coming out with the movies, too. So she was doing it on the music side, and she was doing it on the acting side. So who imagined what kind of work she would have put out over this period of time? And that's what's crazy about it, because she had reached such a plateau. She was at a height for what we have. Yeah. But she was nowhere near, like, her prime. Nah, she didn't, definitely never hit her ceiling. Because she had just hit that point where she was dropping Well, she was taking off. I remember she had, like, the vampire movie. I forgot the name of it. It just had came out. So mm -hmm. she was really taking off. Then she had the movie with um, Jet Li and DMX. So she was on the, yeah. she was on the go. She was doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, facts. Almost like Tupac with the music and the uh, movies. Yeah his finances. Court documents show prosecutors in Brooklyn filed a writ of continuing garnishment against Kelly's record labels to collect over $500,000 owed to his victims. Wow. As of June 1st, 2023, the balance was $504,289.73 and still growing. R. Kelly has a long list of allegations. Tiffany Hawkins took R. Kelly to court over the personal injuries and emotional distress she endured during their three-year relationship. In the court docs, Hawkins claimed she started having sex. With Kelly in 1991 when she was just 15 and he was 24, Hawkins initially sought $10 million in damages, but according to the Chicago Sun-Times, she settled for just $250,000 in 1998. Tracy Sampson... That's remind me of... Uh... Ezel on Friday when he was like, I, I fell. <laughs> well, we could settle right now for $4. How do yeah. you go from $10 million to $250? So a quarter million. Yeah, it's a it's a big gap, but I mean. Yeah, it's a hell of a, a hell gap. Of a gap filed a lawsuit against Kelly, alleging he coerced her into an indecent sexual relationship when she was just 17. Samson, a former intern at Epic Records, claimed she was treated as his personal S object and cast aside. Patrice Jones sued him, claiming he got her pregnant when she was too young, and Montina Woods also sued Kelly, alleging that he recorded them having intercourse without her knowledge. He was charged with 21 counts of making messed up videos to these barely legal girls, and 12 extra counts on producing those images. But the charges were dropped due to the lack of evidence, and due to the fact that they couldn't prove how old the girls on the videos were. Then allegations of his S-cult that had hundreds of girls trapped started going around. Finally, the victims started coming forward, breaking NDAs just to speak the truth. Lifetime document. Yeah, I remember that. It was like saying people wasn't eating, they would be locked in a room for days, bread and water. It got like real messy. Like people be said so it was in like cages almost. Like I kind of remember vaguely that time. Oh man, that's just hearing that is already. Yeah, it's crazy. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. That's yeah, like uh, uh, false imprisonment. Yeah, alone. Pretty much. Documentary Surviving R. Kelly with six hour long episodes presented the most comprehensive look at the allegations against him. Two weeks after it was broadcast, Kelly was dropped by his record company, and there was no escaping the law now. And come June 20th, the world found out he was going to spend 30 years in prison, clearly not enough for everything he's done. U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly didn't mince words well, when she condemned. I'll say it happened fast yeah, when, it, when, it, when it started, when the ball started rolling. Yeah. Because it got drawn out for a minute. Yeah, because... It seemed, he was on tour, and it just kept in a delay, delay, delay. I was like, man, they ain't never going to uh, do anything. But when it when they finally took him uh, to court, the process yeah. kind of sped up a bit. I almost felt like he thought nothing was to be done because it wasn't like the allegations people didn't already know. Like, we already heard the allegations. We seen him already beat the case. Um, so, um, 
kind of got was kind of in that little space. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm pretty sure he didn't even think that he was gonna uh, lose that case. Cause I remember how he was talking around that time um, before it really went down, down, and people seeing um, what happened. It happens quick. Yeah. Demmed R. Kelly's actions. Before his sentencing, several of the women who were victims at the hands of Kelly spoke out, expressing how he had destroyed so many people's lives. But the most mysterious story is that of Aaliyah. Born in January 1979, Aaliyah Houghton landed a record a deal with her uncle in Detroit at just 12 years old. Billboard magazine hailed her for revolutionizing R&B with a blend of pop, soul, and hip-hop wrapped in her honeyed tones. Aaliyah's Try Again hey. snagged the Best Female Video Award at the see. 2000 MTV Video Awards, yeah, edging out Britney Spears, again, Oops, I Did It Again, and Christina Aguilera's What a Girl Wants, signaling her rise to stardom. Throughout her career, she earned three American Music Awards, two MTV VMAs, and five Grammy nominations, hey, cementing her status as an R&B powerhouse. Her influence extended beyond music. Aaliyah's iconic style, crop tops or bandeau tops with baggy jeans and long hair partly veiling one eye, embodied her sweet but street persona and okay. remains a fashion. And it's just crazy how times have changed when they went from having the uh, baggy stuff looking like tomboys to where it's like now they barely have anything on. Like, times have changed completely, like 180. Yeah, yeah they at least left something to the imagination. Just a little bit something to the imagination staple today. Two years after getting signed, Aaliyah teamed up with R. Kelly to drop her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. Guess they tooged that title literally because behind the scenes, she got involved with Kelly and at just 15, they secretly tied the knot. Her parents quickly annulled the marriage once they found out. Despite the scandal, Aaliyah's rep took a bigger hit. She said, Tom, her parents found out. Nah, we're not going for that. Pump the brakes on that. And that's good. A lot of some parents wouldn't even did that. They would have been like, "Go get the bag, girl." And I'm like, "Nah, we not, we not with yeah. none of that. Yeah, it's exactly. not. We not signing off for that." Yeah, put your foot down. Facts. Then Kelly's, with the media that's painting her as a teenage on. seductress rather than one of Kelly's early victims. Fast forward to 2019, federal prosecutors nailed Kelly for scheming to get a fake ID for an unnamed girl. If you've been waiting hey. to apply for disability benefits, it's don't. Hi, right, I'm so. Sarah, and I'm a lawyer at Atticus just a day before his secret wedding to Aaliyah. The indictment accused him of bribing for a fraudulent identification document for Jane Doe on August 30th, 1994. These charges marked the first time Kelly's brief marriage to Aaliyah was tied to his criminal cases. Kelly's lawyers have always claimed he didn't know Aaliyah's real age when they got hitched, with the marriage license falsely stating she was 18. On August 25th, 2001, at just 22, Aaliyah's life was tragically cut short when her twin engine Cessna crashed in the Bahamas post-filming a music video for her final album, Aaliyah. Investigations revealed the plane was overloaded by 700 pounds and the pilot had cocaine and alcohol in his system. And Kelly rarely spoke about Aaliyah after she died. That, that was a sad time in the industry. Um, everybody loved Aaliyah at that point when that happened. It was just sad for the like, industry because at that point we wasn't used to seeing celebrities passing away and it was just in that early. I think it was like 25 when it uh, happened. So uh, we really wasn't used to seeing um, people leave that early. Yeah, not like it is today. Not like it is today. Um, it was still, life still had a little bit of life to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With that shiny part of the sunshine, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, now you see a lot more artists uh, reach a, uh, on Tommy the Mines. Nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's still, even now, seeing the pictures and whatnot, it's still kind of got like a shock effect, even on me. Still to today. Yeah. Bill Cosby's lawyer. Yeah, you read that right. Kelly is not just fighting his conviction, he's aiming for a full reversal. His legal team claims that two jurors who watched a documentary about him had no business being on his case. And wow. here's the twist. Kelly believes Jay-Z's vendetta over a lost $70 million lawsuit might be behind his imprisonment. Wow. Fast forward to now, and Kelly's making bold moves. He's filed an appeal, arguing that biased jurors and withheld information about his partner's ages tainted his trial. It's a legal brawl like no other, with Kelly clawing for his freedom. His team is pulling out all the stops, from questioning juror integrity to claiming a lack of transparency during his trial. But wait, there's more. That's his lawyer's job, is try to find a loophole. That's what you uh, paid him to do, and that's what he paid him to do, because at the end of the day, he's not just trying to sit on a 30 and just take it on the chin. He's going to try to fight. Yeah, that's what anybody would try to do. You're going to try to fight. But this is, like they said, it was hard enough at that point in time finding somebody who hadn't seen anything. Yeah. Um. So that's what he running with. Yeah. But like, can you imagine now? Yeah. Yeah. It's even going to be worse.
Network. Rumor has it, Kelly's got a score to settle with some big name celebrities. He's on a mission to expose secrets of those he feels oh. abandoned him when he needed them the most. No Reports suggest part. Kelly and his team are collaborating with federal authorities, Jersey's. hoping to reduce his sentence by providing dirt on other celebrities allegedly involved in similar crimes. The names tossed around include a rapper and a renowned singer. Adding fuel to the fire, Kelly has accused none other than Jay-Z of some heinous behavior. Kelly's camp claims Jay-Z played a part in his downfall, driven by a sense of injustice over Kelly shouldering all the blame while Jay-Z walks free. Now, wow. let's talk about the skeletons in Jay-Z's closet. The buzz around Jay-Z allegedly dating Foxy Brown when she was just 14 has been circulating for years. According to rumors... It was, um, in the rumor 16. Right. Not make a difference, but it was but 16. still, yeah. They started seeing each other when she was 15 and he was 24. Creepy, right? Jay-Z finally addressed these rumors in his song Picasso Baby, but his denial only added to the controversy. Foxy Brown herself admitted in an interview that she was shocked by Jay-Z's line and hinted at a deeper history beyond music. Was I shocked when Jay said the line in Picasso Baby? Yes, because we've talked about that. We have a history that supersedes music. We know how this business works. We sit back and we laugh at those rumors. We laugh at that. I think he began to feel the pressure because people began to say my age. The age thing? She was 15? 14? After a while? That gets to a person. The fact that he felt- I remember like when it first started, um, sh um, Foxy was talking about Jay-Z would uh, just put her in the studio with a two liter um, and, a, and a pizza. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And then she would come back and her verse would be done or whatever she had done. But like she said, he used to pick up from school. So she was very young in the game when he was had her in the studio recording. Right. But you know what I'm saying? This is like anything else, you know, People say things, and then it's something you you gotta find the truth once yeah. it's out there. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean, sure. Well, he needed to say that, that means something struck a chord. She felt the pressure from the public scrutiny about her age, which might have pushed Jay-Z to speak up. As for Aaliyah, Jay-Z has remained tight-lipped, but his former business partner, Dame Dash, Dame, spilled the Dame beans, Dash. saying Jay-Z had his eyes on Aaliyah, but she wasn't interested. Instead, she ended up with Dash. Dame Dash, the former co-founder of Rockefeller Records, spilled some serious tea. I said, the thing about Aaliyah was like, every time I saw her, she looked different. So she had different looks every time, and I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and I realized it was Aaliyah, and then I just threw my A game. Right. And then, you know, I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well, and I didn't know. And then, I was, and then she, like, it got brought up, and I was like, fuck both of y'all. <laughs> and But it never worked out for them, and we were both, like, trying to get at her. I, like, kind of eased up, but then we ran into each other. It's a long story. He admitted that both he and Jay-Z were... It was like after her passing, I remember him being the saddest. And mm -hmm. even now to today, he's married, had other kids. He still talk about Aaliyah in the high regards. Like, that was the love right. of his life. That was the one that got away from that him. Got away. And that's how much... And he was really um, hurt behind her passing. Yeah, you can tell, man. It, yeah. it, it, it has an effect on who he is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, like, it's definitely affected him. And every time he talks about it, you can hear you just, it. Yeah, you hear it even today. And I was like... Over 20 years ago. Yeah. We're interested in Aliyah, leading to some tension between the two. Like was he bitter? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, he felt the way. That's crazy. The true reason <laughs> of Rockefeller's break. But that's, everybody knows that shit. Mm. Like, um, we were both like, we were both. I heard it, but I didn't. Yeah, I but what they be trying to act like he was like, fucking what now? He was sending flowers and doing all the shit that mm. nigga was courting him. So we were both going hard. And we, right. and we ended up in the same house for 4th, 4th of July. So we were, for some reason, this, this day... Wait a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. That's funny. It was like, you know, it was like one day it might lean toward him and then lean toward me. One disturbing rumor is that Jay-Z had a hand in Aaliyah's okay. death to clear the way for Beyonce's rise to superstardom. Maybe that's why you moved his ass around and now the Rockefeller's so tough and then just moved right over to Def Jam. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah and Beyonce's solo career was struggling. Mm. Damn on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit, it was some of the worst shit ever. Damn. <laughs> they were having a hard time. She got an issue with Beyonce. Yes, yeah, And Jay-Z. You can tell. Now why was she speaking? You definitely tell it's personal. Mm -hmm. Her solo, and then Aaliyah died. And then they brought Rich Harrison in. You know who's got me thinking it's crazy right now? She liked posing with him in pictures for, for page six. Aaliyah didn't. She fell in love with Dane. 
and Aaliyah's gone. And but here's the kicker. While Dame's not about to let Jay-Z off the hook, he's calling out Jay for teaming up with Kelly on projects, even though he knew exactly what Kelly did. I had to go, because I couldn't believe he did a project with her, with, um, R. Kelly known. Remember the Cassie drama? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. These raids weren't your run-of-the-mill snooping either. The feds came in hot, seizing anything and did their actions to shady But that's not all. Lawsuits are raining down on Diddy. From mistreatment allegations and Miami, the mastermind behind the whole thing. Q Homeland Security crashing Diddy's spots in LA and Miami. Your real Trump push came to Well, this isn't taking the Diddy's got some top bunch of Allegedly, Beyonce, whether he choir boy, making moves to protect herself, even considering divorcing Jay-Z to avoid the fallout. Can you even imagine Beyonce and Jay-Z splitting up? But here's the kicker. Diddy's not just throwing Jay-Z under the bus. He's lining up a whole parade of Hollywood giants to be exposed next. He's on a mission and ain't nobody safe. Now Jay-Z's got a rep for being slick, managing to keep any dirt from sticking to him over the years, covering his tracks like an expert. Last Wednesday, Clubhouse TV 2.0 dropped a bombshell by posting audio of WAC 100's phone call interview with R. Kelly from Federal Prison on Clubhouse. It's crazy. Well, I say, be out there laughing and making, making comedian jokes and doing all other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ask to be next. Yeah. What's so yeah, fucked up about it? It's so stupid. They're so stupid they don't even realize the move that's going on. I mean, it's crazy, yeah, man. I mean, that's why I don't believe none of this shit. I mean, no, I I believe it or not, mm -hmm. R. Kelly isn't buying. That's what's up that um, Black 100 talked to um, R. Kelly um, about the situation. He, he got, do got a point there, yo. Why are you laughing? Uh, you could be next. If they did it to me, uh, they, yeah. they can also do it to y'all that's... Doing similar things. Facts. The sex trafficking allegations against Diddy. Kelly talked about Homeland Security raiding Diddy's homes, saying the feds were mad because Diddy's flagrant. But he also warned that Diddy and everyone else should take the investigation seriously because these days celebrities are being targeted, regardless of the truth behind the accusations. You know, usually when they run up in a nigga house, they coming to get you too. Yeah. They look at, they still searching and looking like that nigga ain't on the run or that they ain't kind of the only come turn himself in and no shit like that. They grounded his plane because they seen him moving. He wasn't even on the plane. They wanted to make sure he wasn't because they, they probably didn't restrict his passport and shit as of yet, as of now. You know, but yeah, this shit is crazy. With all this drama, the question remains. Man, he got enough money if he want to leave. He don't need a passport. He, he could figure out some type of way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People, if people could get in here easily, I'm pretty sure you could easily get out. Yeah, well, all the same. You know, they done struck up on a lot of that money, so it won't be so quite as easy. But I'm sure he's got some type of asset yeah, somewhere. He got a book back full of money somewhere. He got something tucked ready off to somewhere. Go. Should Jay-Z be held to the same standard as R. Kelly? And is Kelly coming after Diddy and Jay-Z next? Trey TV. Let's get it. This is Lamar Wilson here representing Ghetto Action News Network underscore all lower cases. No spaces. You can find us on Facebook. And when you do, leave some comments, share something, scroll the page, have a good time, and come back. Facts. I'm going to get right into this. It's just getting messier by the moment, man. Yeah. Like, when they start aligning you up with, like, people who already locked up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's never a good look. You don't want your name in the same sentences as theirs. Yeah, and then, you know, you, here goes one of the bigger names that you have connected to. Man, it's bad. And they doing it on the Stephen A. Smith show. Yeah, on the Stephen A. Smith show. That's Crazy. like always, like, you catching all types of traffic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we just going to see where this goes. Because it seems like it gets a little deeper every moment, man. Um, what you think about this? I think uh, Diddy's like, I don't play basketball while I'm on the Stephen A. Smith show. I don't play no type of sports. But, I mean, why am I over there? Right. I'm just crazy. I think R. Kelly made a good point. If you're doing the same thing I'm doing, don't be surprised if you um, end up exactly where I'm at. If you are the key key and laughing and you're doing the same thing I did to get myself put here, I don't think that you're not going to be put here. I think it was a great point. Um, an interview that he called into WAC 100. Can't wait mm -hmm. to see what else comes from this. But to the end, it's your boy Trey TV. And I'm out.